so next up is our dynamic linking demonstrator application. It is an Android application that uses our dynamic linking implementation to load and link modules. In the demo video we load and link image manipulation filters to edit an image as well as demonstrate some other features of the runtime. So right at the beginning of the video we wanted to emphasize that the demo is actually running on a real Android phone and not for example on an emulator. So on the right you can see that this phone screen is not an emulator window, but instead it's a screen mirroring software. And here you can see footage of the physical phone screen, and you can see that both the mirroring software and the phone screen sync up. So in the beginning the main module is loaded and its initialization function is run. The initialization function sets up the GUI elements as well as the callbacks for the buttons using host functions. The dump button triggers debug prints into the console. The output shows which modules are loaded and which functions are linked from those modules. The Say Something button loads and links in a module which changes the text view above it. Here are the host functions used to create it. The Create button function creates the button on the Android side and returns a handle to it. The Register on Click function takes in that handle and assigns a callback function from the module to that button. The callback for this button loads in a module called Android Chatbot and links a function called Write Message and then runs that function. The actual loading and linking is performed similarly to Linux for example, by first loading the module with DL open and then linking a function from it using DL sim. Here is the code of the side module. The write message function takes a handle to a text view and writes one of the pre-written messages in it. What's notable here is that the side modules can also import host functions. In this case the modify text view host function is imported in order to write the messages. And now the dump button shows the previously loaded module and the function linked from it. The error demo button demonstrates our error handling. The application doesn't crash when an error occurs. Instead, DLR can be used to retrieve the error message. Here we use the text view to show the error for demonstration purposes. In this case, the error was an attempt to load a non-existent module. The dump button shows that no new modules were loaded. Now we load an image to the black canvas area using the load image button. In this demo the image is embedded into a module and a function in the module is used to load the image into linear memory and then into the canvas. In a future implementation a host function could be used to load the image instead. Here is the redraw function that updates the canvas. The value of each pixel is copied from an image buffer into the bitmap using the modify bitmap function. Thank you. 
So this is the previously mentioned setup function for the image module. It copies the embedded image data into the image buffer, which was also used in the redraw function shown before. Now that we have an image to edit, let's invert its colors using the invert button. And now we can see that the image is inverted. Here's the inversion code. It also operates on the same image buffer seen before. Now let's grayscale the image. The grayscale function also operates on the same image buffer as well. What this demonstrates is that data can be freely passed between multiple modules because all of them share the same linear memory. Here we see for the final time all the modules that we have loaded and all the functions we've linked. At the beginning there were none, and as the demo progressed, more of them were added in right at the points they were actually needed. 